Good morning, St. Philip's, and welcome to this devotion for Wednesday. On one occasion, a man came up to Jesus with a very serious question. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It was an excellent question, and I'm happy to say that Jesus gave an excellent response. It came in the form of a parable, one of his most famous parables, what we call the parable of the Good Samaritan. You can read the whole of it in Luke chapter 10, but most of you probably know the gist. Jesus said there was a man who was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, traveling on a very windy and dangerous road, and he fell among robbers, bandits who attacked him, robbed him, robbed him of his clothes, of his property, and left him by the side of the road, bleeding for dead. Well, shortly thereafter, there came another traveler, a man, Jesus said, who happened to be a priest, probably making his way to Jerusalem to perform his priestly duties. And when he saw the wounded man, rather than stopping and having compassion on his fellow Jew, surprisingly, he passed by on the other side, perhaps not wanting to defile himself by touching a wounded individual. Instead, he made his way up to Jerusalem without a care for his fellow traveler. After that, another man appeared on the road. This man was a Levite. Now, the Levites were those who assisted the priests in the temple worship. In other words, another holy man, a religious individual. But like the priest before him, when he saw the wounded man by the side of the road, he too turned a blind eye and hurried by on the other side of the road. Finally, there appeared a third traveler. And this man, Jesus said, was a Samaritan. Now, if you know anything about the New Testament or anything about the, New, the uh, first century, then you know that the Samaritans and the Jews were sworn enemies. They had nothing to do with each other. The Jews hated the Samaritans, considered them half-breeds. In fact, it's somewhat ironic that we refer to this as the parable of the good Samaritan, because in the minds of most first century Jews, that was a contradiction of terms. There was no such thing as a good Samaritan. All Samaritans were bad. And yet, much to the surprise of Jesus' first century audience, the Lord says it was the Samaritan who stopped and had compassion on the wounded man. It was the Samaritan who went over to him and dressed his wounds, pouring on oil. It was the Samaritan who mounted the wounded man on his own donkey and led him in safety to the town. It was the Samaritan who cared for him and nursed him back to health. And when he had to travel on to the next place, left the innkeeper with a large amount of money to help the man return to full strength. Jesus closed the parable with this question. Which do you think, he said, was a neighbor to the man in need? Now, let me just say the key to understanding Jesus' parables is to place yourself in the story. Whenever Jesus tells a parable, we are meant to ask ourselves, which character am I? Am I the priest who, when I see someone in need, pass by on the other side of the road? Am I like the Levite who doesn't want to be bothered? When I see someone in need, I turn a blind eye and hurry on. Or am I like the Good Samaritan? When I see someone in need, I stop and at my own personal cost, care for them and help them along. We would all like to think that we are the Good Samaritan in this story. But today, I want to suggest to you that we are not. I want to suggest to you that we are not the Good Samaritan. But nor for that matter, are we the priest or the Levite. No, I want to suggest to you that if we are anything at all, my friends, We are the wounded man in this story. We are individuals, men and women, who are lying by the side of the road left for dead. We have been attacked and ravaged by human sin. This is what the Apostle Paul means when he says the wages of sin is death. That is what sin has done to you and to me. It has left us helpless to save ourselves. And all the religion in the world represented by the priests and the Levites can't save us either. But there is one. There is one who comes alongside of us. There is one who appears on the road. One who is despised and rejected by men. 
one who was despised and rejected by his own people. And that is Jesus Christ. I want to suggest to you today that Jesus is the real good Samaritan. The one who sees us in our need and at his own personal cost comes and pays the price to make us whole. Here's how the prophet Isaiah put it in that wonderful passage on the suffering servant. He says of Jesus, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. He was one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and esteemed not. But he took up our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. We considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. My friends, if we are anybody in Jesus' parable, we are the wounded man. We are helpless to save ourselves and yet into this broken, miserable condition, into the dangers of this world, comes the Son of God, who at great personal cost, the cost of his own blood, the cost of his own life, picks us up and rescues us, and by the grace and power of his Holy Spirit, makes us whole. Makes us to be a new creation, so that having been healed, having been saved, having received compassion and mercy, we can go forth and begin to show compassion and mercy to others. It's only because Jesus was the good Samaritan to us that we are empowered and given the strength to go out and be good Samaritans to others. So today, let us give thanks for Jesus Christ, for the compassion that he has shown to us. As the old hymn puts it, there is a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. And so for Jesus, for the true good Samaritan, we give thanks and praise this day. God bless you, and I hope to see you very soon.